I'm Ava, a 29-year-old mother to a wonderful 8-year-old named James. Lately, my life has taken an unexpected turn, all thanks to my troublesome ex-husband. You know the type? The one you wish you had dealt with a long time ago? Well, that's him. Our story began in college, navigating through significant and monumental moments together. We graduated side by side, moved to Chicago, and supported each other in the early stages of our careers. We built a life together, but I must admit that Leo, my ex-husband, was always a mediocre guy. He wasn't particularly successful or wealthy. We came together during a vulnerable period in my life when my mother was battling cancer. Leo provided the support I needed at that crucial time. On an unforgettable Thanksgiving, he surprised everyone by proposing, and I said yes. We decided to tie the knot, and as a wedding present, my parents gave us a mansion they owned a grand start to our new life as husband and wife. Then came James, our baby boy. While I found my purpose and flourished in my well-paying job, Leo struggled to catch a break. He bounced from one job to another, never staying for more than a month. As I was thriving, our relationship hit a rough patch. At first, I believed we could overcome the challenges. However, subtle changes in Leo's behavior caught my attention. I couldn't quite pinpoint what was bothering him, but over time, it became evident that he was dissatisfied with his financial situation. The fact that I owned more than him seemed to hurt his ego. Then, one day, I stumbled upon clues suggesting Leo's involvement in illegal activities. Confronting him directly seemed impossible, fearing his defensive reaction due to the company he worked for and his position. Despite his surprising earnings, it raised suspicions. Walking on eggshells around him became exhausting, prompting me to gather the courage for a heart-to-heart -heart talk one evening. To my surprise, he didn't get defensive, but confessed to engaging in illegal activities. He had been embezzling money using the company credit cards, driven by insecurity about earning less than me and living in a house that wasn't his own. James's arrival made things messier, intensifying his shame for not providing for our family. His admission of these illegal activities dealt a final blow to our already fragile relationship. James, my priority, couldn't grow up with a father involved in criminal activities. Leo wasn't the role model I envisioned for him, and I couldn't risk the potential consequences for our family. Fearing the unknown impact on our lives, I chose to prioritize James's future. Divorce, with joint custody of James, became the necessary step. Breaking free from the toxic web we had woven around ourselves was terrifying, yet liberating. The decision was made in pursuit of the best possible life for my son and myself. A year and some months had passed since our divorce, and everything was going smoothly. Leo and I had a well-arranged agreement. He would have James on weekends, and our communication remained low-key. Despite his mention of remarriage, I harbored no judgment. Our divorce was relatively straightforward. On an ordinary Monday morning, after James had hopped on the school bus, I began my day, performing typical mom duties such as chores and walking our dog, Archer. Working as a social media manager for a lifestyle magazine allowed me to mostly work from home, except for three office days. Engrossed in my work in the study, I was interrupted by a woman's voice calling my name from downstairs. The voice didn't match that of any close friends, and upon descending, I found Evelyn Leo's new wife. Although she seemed oddly familiar, I couldn't immediately place her. Evelyn declared, Ava, we need to talk. Confused but willing to listen, I responded, Hi there, Evelyn. I'm not sure why you're saying that, but okay. Go ahead. She questioned how long I planned to stay in the house, emphasizing that Leo's initial support was due to James. According to her, it was time for me to figure out my stuff after months. Baffled, I asked for clarification. Evelyn expressed exhaustion from living in a cramped apartment, unable to host family and friends for Christmas. She believed it was tough to make memories in such a confined space. She acknowledged the house as a dream home, but insisted it belonged to Leo, who had not been upfront about it. I yearn for a fresh start, a new life right here. My ultimate desire is to find a solution that works for everyone involved. Perhaps we could explore a place nearby maintaining stability for you and James while giving me the opportunity to create a home with Leo. However, the assertion that I need to leave caught me off guard. Who told you that, Evelyn? This house belongs to me. 
I inherited it from my parents. No need to hide it from me, as Leo has already shared how you've been spreading rumors about the house being yours and criticizing him for not being successful. I don't comprehend the dynamics between you two, but speaking negatively about a man who's letting you stay under his roof raises questions about the image you're painting of his dad for your son. Hold on, Evelyn. I'm curious about who's been providing you with all these details. Let me set things straight. This house is unequivocally mine. Speaking of Leo, he's the last topic I'd like to discuss. However, Leo claims he owns this place. Why would I lie to you? I can show you the paperwork that proves this house is rightfully mine. When I got married, my parents gifted me this place and named me the owner. Regarding getting my life together, I already have a job that provides for me and my son. Honestly, I don't know what to believe anymore. I had a strong suspicion that Leo deliberately kept Evelyn in the dark about certain matters. When I inquired if she had some time to talk, Evelyn affirmed, and we decided to sit down for a conversation. Offering her a choice of drinks, she opted for tea. Leading Evelyn into the living room, she took a seat on the couch while I went upstairs to search for the necessary paperwork. It was evident that Evelyn needed tangible proof, and I couldn't blame her for that. I couldn't fathom how long Leo had been deceiving her regarding the ownership of the house. Upon finding the relevant documents, I returned to the living room and handed them to Evelyn. As she sifted through the paperwork, I took the initiative to prepare some hot peppermint tea for both of us. Expressing my regret, I acknowledged that blaming her was not justified. However, I felt compelled to share the unsettling revelation that Leo had been spreading false and malicious stories about her. He portrayed her as suspicious and erratic during their marriage, asserting that he divorced her because he couldn't handle it anymore. To add insult to injury, he pretended to be concerned about their child, James, having a mother like her. Leo had woven a web of deceit, claiming ownership of the mansion. According to his narrative, post-divorce, Evelyn struggled, and, in an apparent act of kindness, he generously offered her a place to stay, this very mansion. He took pride in recounting this fabricated story at dinner parties with colleagues and on vacations with Evelyn's family. The extent of his deception was unsettling, and I could only imagine the impact it had on Evelyn's perception of her own life. It's as if he has made it his favorite topic. Whenever someone brings up your name or the divorce, he seizes the opportunity to weave a narrative. Leo has even gone so far as to claim he gave you warning signs, insinuating that you were desperately clinging to the house. The rumors he's been spreading about me are unbelievable. He's tarnishing my reputation, portraying me as a helpless wreck post-divorce, supposedly dependent on his benevolence for support. Frankly, I never harbored any doubts about Evelyn. Leo, or Jorge as I used to know him, was always a dubious character with hidden skeletons in his closet. The primary reason for our separation was his involvement in white-collar crimes. At that time, I was still emotionally attached to him, making me hesitant to expose his wrongdoing. In retrospect, I realize I made a mistake. I was blinded by what I thought was love. Dealing with Leo was tricky. I didn't want him anywhere near our son, yet I also didn't want to see him behind bars. So I fabricated an excuse about outgrowing the relationship and quietly exited the scene. However, discovering that he's been parading around as my savior, acting all high and mighty, was a line I couldn't let him cross. I decided to lay everything bare. I confronted Evelyn, realizing there was something she needed to know. I acknowledged that while I wasn't entirely honest about our separation, neither had Leo. Ava, I disclosed to Evelyn, Leo was involved in embezzlement. It was a challenging situation, and after confronting him, he admitted to using his company's credit card for personal gain. Faced with a dilemma of wanting to protect him versus doing what was right, I ultimately chose not to turn him into the police. I believe he managed to evade consequences for his actions. Wait, Ava, are you telling me that Leo, my husband, was involved in embezzlement? I can't even comprehend that. Seriously, it's beyond my understanding. I know, Evelyn. I didn't believe it myself. James's well-being was my priority. Despite Leo still being my husband, I couldn't bring myself to report him. I did what I thought was best for James, shielding him from the consequences of having a father engaged in illegal activities. I had to prioritize his safety and future. Wait, what if he's still committing fraud? If he never faced consequences, 
he might still be involved in such activities. This is mind-blowing. This is the man I married. I need to figure out if he's still entangled in this mess. We can't let it slide this time. Well, I've thought of a plan. Isn't Leo's birthday in one week's? Yes, it is. I've come up with a brilliant scheme to finally expose him to everyone. Evelyn, you won't believe the epic idea I've got. Picture this. What if you ask Leo if we could throw his birthday bash at, well, let's call it his mansion. You know, my place. Use all your powers of persuasion until he can't resist saying a big fat yes. We'll invite all his work buddies, basically everyone he's ever met. And then comes the piece de resistance. We decided to orchestrate a super special announcement and surprise for his birthday. Count me in, I thought. Evelyn did an excellent job convincing Leo about the grand party, as evidenced when he came to pick up James for their weekend together and brought up the matter. Hey, Ava, he began. I need to ask you for a favor. Of course, Leo. What is it? Well, Evelyn wants to throw a big birthday celebration for me and invite all my co-workers, her family, and pretty much everyone she knows. The thing is, our place is like a sardine can, and it just won't fit all those people. So, I was wondering if you would be willing to let us use your mansion for the party. James would be thrilled about the idea as well. Leo was completely oblivious to the trap we had set for him. Little did he know that he was walking right into our carefully crafted plan. All right, Leo, I'll think about it. The mansion is available, but I'll need to check with work to see if I can get a day off. I'll let you know. Thanks, Ava. And, uh, there is something else. I know it's a big favor to ask, but could you pretend that the mansion is mine during the party? It would be embarrassing in front of my co-workers and in-laws if they found out I had to borrow your place. I didn't want to appear like a total loser. And, well, maybe we shouldn't tell Evelyn about it either. That's just typical Leo. I expressed my reservations, telling him that keeping such a significant secret seemed like a massive undertaking. I needed time to think about it, but I couldn't guarantee anything. I know, I know, it's a bit of a stretch, but just think about it. I'd owe you a lot if you'd help me out, Leo pleaded. With that, he had to go, urging me to text him once I made up my mind. Just like that, everything fell into place. I texted Evelyn, confirming that the plan was a go, and asked her to send out invites to everyone for Leo's big day. A few days later, I gave Leo the green light to celebrate his birthday at my place, promising to keep his little secret. Finally, the big day arrived. Leo's birthday. He walked in with Evelyn, and we all acted casual. Little did Leo know that we had a whole plan brewing behind the scenes. James was excited to see his dad, but I couldn't ignore the hurt and betrayal I felt. I had protected Leo and kept his secrets, and in return, he spread lies about me during our marriage. I was done playing the good guy, and it was time for a change. As the guests started rolling in, I couldn't help but observe Leo putting on his offensive charm, attempting to act perfect and flawless. Little did he know that his lies were about to be exposed. All of his friends, co-workers, and family members filled my house, completely clueless about what was about to go down. Finally, as the majority of the guests had assembled, Evelyn and I beckoned everyone to gather around for an announcement. Hey everyone, we're all here to give a shout out to Leo today. But if we're going to raise a glass to the guy, it's only fair that you know what he's really about. It's easy to talk smack and spread gossip, but believe me, the truth has a way of showing up. Now, you might be curious about how Evelyn and I, the ex and the current, can actually get along. Well, here's the lowdown. We've both been through the Leo experience and he has been fooling us around, I began. Leo interjected. Whoa, hold up, Ava. What's going on? Did you maybe hit the drinks a bit too hard? No worries, everyone. You can just go back to whatever you were up to. I have the situation under control, I responded. Hey, Leo, just give her a chance to speak, Evelyn urged. I know Leo might have been running his mouth and spreading lies about me, making me look like the crazy one for divorcing him or whatever. But let me set the record straight. There's only one reason why I left him, and that is because he was involved in some shady fraud. Thanks to Evelyn, the truth came out. I continued. Leo has been yapping about how this mansion belongs to him. Well, newsflash, it's actually mine. I've been working to raise my kid while Mr. Lucas over here has been stealing money from companies. The truth behind why I split with Leo is that he was mixed up in embezzlement stuff. I couldn't summon the courage to confront him about it before, 
but I'm not holding back any longer. Evelyn, I don't know what Ava has been telling you, but I promise you, it's not what you think. You guys, there's been a mistake. Cut the crap, Leo. Ava's been real with me, and I know all about your sketchy stuff. It was hard to believe I fell for your stories. Seriously, did you marry me just because you needed a new crash pad after Ava gave you the boot? Well, people, just so you know, the authorities are in the loop, and they'll be showing up any moment. It looks like the party's a no-go today. Seeing as this is my place and not Leo's, you're all free to take off. Are you for real, Ava? You've wrecked everything for me and Evelyn. Seriously, you were in on this? How could you go behind my back with my ex-wife? You two, I'm out of here. The cops are on their way, Leo. It might be a good move to get your lawyer to sort this out. And that's how I finally took care of what needed to be done a long time ago. Based on what I learned from Evelyn, there was an ongoing investigation into Leo, and he was found guilty of embezzling funds from the company he used to work for. The extent of his deceit went further as the company he was currently employed with discovered unexplainable discrepancies in their accounting records. It became evident that Leo was still up to his old tricks, continuing to steal from people. Consequently, he was slapped with a hefty fine of $170,000 and is now facing a three-year prison sentence. I endeavored to shield James from these harsh truths for as long as possible, but eventually, I had to disclose the reality about his father. I had to convey that Leo was not a good man. The revelation has been challenging for James, and he still yearns for his dad at times. Nevertheless, he comprehends the situation. Exposing Leo and bringing his shady activities to light has been akin to lifting a heavy weight off my shoulders. I feel considerably more liberated now. It's true that sometimes you want to trust people and give them a second chance because everyone deserves one, right? However, there are individuals like Leo who simply refuse to change. I am fully embracing my life as a single mom, with my focus unwaveringly on James's happiness and well-being. I won't allow anyone to drag us down again. My friendship with Evelyn has been a source of comfort throughout this ordeal. It's amusing how life can lead to unexpected friendships. It feels like I've finally dealt with my unfinished business and moved on.